with another reaction video and we got let's i was gonna say let's we got larry bird gets trashed by the nba media i believe this video came out about like two days ago i'm not sure i forget but yeah let's get straight into it let's get it man let's see what this would it's another one of these videos let's see what this is hitting for y'all let's get it one debate I've been seeing get pushed a lot recently is Kevin Durant versus Larry Bird. And on social media, YouTube, a lot of the younger fans, current NBA fans, think KD actually is the better player and greater player. And one guy arguing in Kevin Durant's favor is our favorite dude, that being Gilbert Arenas on Shannon Sharp's podcast. You got him in the top 10 now? Well, I mean, by the time he's done, I mean, is Larry Bird in the top 10? Yeah. Isn't he better than Larry Bird? Uh, I mean, all I know is Larry Bird got three consecutive MVPs with three titles and two finals MVPs. Yeah, I mean, you know, in, in the year where your team is dominant. And hold on. He got him in the era with Magic, Kareem, and Jordan. Now, you told me Jordan mm -hmm. ran the 80s. But I know a white guy that could not run a snail yeah. and could not and, and could not jump Ash. Yeah. Uh -huh. And Ash got, got four left feet. But, but it's the team. The team was dominant. So stopping it right there, the first erroneous point from Gilbert is <sighs> man, see, it's like I, I don't you know, let's just let's just watch, man. I don't that's like come on, like Gilbert <laughs> Alright. Let me let's get back. Saying twice, it was the team. It was the team that was dominant. Somehow I'm trying to imply the team being great because of Larry Bird takes away from Bird and his overall ability. It makes zero sense. And for some context with Bird, Boston before him was in a basketball wasteland. And the two years prior, lost 50 games and 53. In that two year time period, the worst combined record in the league. And looking at rookie Bird coming fresh into the NBA to that 29 win team, instantly improved him to 61 games. And many forget Bird that year finished fourth in MVP voting. And the idea. First of all, like, is there anybody else we could say that actually did that? I'm going to look it up and see if there's anybody else besides Larry that came in the rookie and did that. Like, did something like that or better than that. I'm going to look it up and see because that's crazy. Like, come on, man. They got to give him props. Like, stop this. The Bird should be penalized somehow for impacting all of his teammates in the win column. Is simply idiotic. But like always, consider the source, as Gilbert Arenas was a me first player, not a team first player. And if you look at Larry Bird's three MVPs and boil down to his team being dominant, you're simply a fool. Look at those combined stats, those three MVPs 26 points, 10 boards, nearly 7 assists on 539 and 89 splits. And don't get me wrong, Bird's teams. They were great, and talent-wise, had tons of talent. But why those Boston teams were so dominant, so great? Was it purely because of talent, or because of Larry Bird impacting his players? From guys like McHale, Parrish, Walton, even Dennis Johnson, Danny Ainge, who had career years playing alongside Bird. If being a dominant team, a great team, was just about pure talent, why has Kevin Durant in Phoenix, Brooklyn, and OKC have a combined zero championships, despite his rosters being stacked nearly every single season. Talent is great and it is a must have, but to be a great team, an all time great team, you need a great leader like a Larry Bird who made all of his teammates better. Right? You remember he, he has three. He won dominant. He had three championships, two finals MVPs because someone got another MVP because he choked in that final, but they won. Yes. Right? So, yes, he scored he, eight points, but people forget that. But see, they're too young to remember that he scored eight points twice. Cornbread Maxwell yep. in 81 won the finals MVP. Yeah. I'm old enough to remember because Larry Bird was my favorite player. Yes. So I, when I talk, mm -hmm. listen to me now. The 1981 finals is a very odd series. As looking at the Celtics, a very well-balanced team with tons of depth. And Bird supposedly choking in this series, while he didn't play great, it's the farthest thing from a choke job. As in total, Average 15 points, second on the team, 15 boards, by far first, seven assists, also first, and two steals, again, first. This series, top to bottom, looking at Boston and Houston, was about teams and balance. 
as even Moses Malone, one of the best centers in NBA history, only averaged 22 points on 40% shooting. And saying Bird in the series somehow choked is the first thing from the truth and absolutely laughable. As even when Bird scored 8 points in Game 3, in that game Boston still won and Bird himself had a triple-double. And after Game 4 in the series was tied 2 games apiece in any one series, Bird in the final two games averaged 20 points, the highest on the team, 12 and a half boards, also the highest, and at least seven assists, also the highest. And in a pivotal game six for Bird's first championship, had 27 points, also a game high, on 55% shooting. If you want to say Bird played badly two games, go ahead and say that. But to say he choked this series, I can't accept that. Now, if you want to talk about choke jobs choking away a series, look no further than Kevin Wayne Durant. 2010 versus the Lakers, the series was tied 2 2. <laughs> Why he just say his. So <laughs> Hold on, time out. That just caught my ear. Why he just say Kevin Wayne Durant? Choking <laughs> series, look no further than Kevin Wayne Durant. <laughs> 2010 versus the Lakers. Yo, that's too funny to me. Look no further than Kevin Wayne Durant. <laughs> 2010 versus the Lakers, the series was tied 2-2 in the first round. Kade in the last two games averaged 21.5 points on sub-30% shooting. Joke job. The 2011 West Finals versus Dallas, which OKC was favored in, in the final three games, lost all three games, with KD himself averaging 25 points, four turnovers, on sub 40% shooting. 2013 versus Memphis in the second round got absolutely clamped by Tony Allen in the three games of that series. As in those games, averaged 24 points, five turnovers on 31% shooting. Those series right there are actual choke jobs when the superstar flamed out in pivotal games. And if you want to talk flaming out in pivotal games, the creme de la creme, the biggest choke job in NBA history, was in the 2016 Western Conference Finals. If you want to say Burn 81 choked in the finals, go ahead and say that. But I'll give you a warning. Tread very, very lightly. Because this list right here is on the beginning of Katie's choke jobs in his postseason career. You know, so Larry Bird <coughs> dominated in his right, but you got to remember, let's let's not think, let's not forget that the '80s wasn't the, the '80s was drugged up, right? Them players, is he? I can burn past a crackhead, right? And it, a crackhead was not <laughs> hard to get by. Huh? Half those dudes <laughs> were trying to hurry up and get to the next fix, right? So he out there having a good old time with the boys out there. So now stopping it right there, a common debate tactic that just such a weak move is downplaying an entire decade of basketball. And Gilbert doing this is quite literally the only way you can argue Kevin Durant is actually better than Burr. But if you know NBA history in the 1980s, in terms of overall talent, was completely loaded. I'm looking at small forwards specifically, who which Burr was competing against. I would heavily argue this era had the best overall talent of small forwards. I mean, for starters, Dominique Wilkins, a walking 30 points per game, Adrian Dantley, also a 30 bomb, Alex English, always in the high 20s, Kiki Vandeweghe, an absolute bucket, George the Iceman Gervin, Mark Aguirre, averaged 24 points for the decade, you had Bernard King, a beast post and pre-injury, Terry Cummings, a walking 20 and 10, Xavier McDaniels, Bobby Jones, Marcus Johnson, Larry Nance, James Worthy, and of course, Julius the Dr. Irving. That is the small four talent from just the 1980s. And if you want to go one step further in terms of dynasties, all-time great teams, again, the 80s was stacked. Of course, the Lakers, eight finals trips, five championships, or a perennial 60-win team. The 76ers, Dr. J, then added Moses Malone and became unstoppable. As an 83, won 65 games, went 12-1 in route to the championship. And of course, later on, the Bad Boy Pistons, a mini dynasty that went three straight finals and won back-to-back -back titles. The fact Bird from 81 to 86 not only won three championships, but also three MVPs versus those players and those teams is simply remarkable. And quite frankly, is more impressive than anything Kevin Durant has ever done. 
ac- if you're going to accumulate it or point it, whatever, Kevin Durant is still going to be in front. We're, we're looking at Kevin Durant like you joined him to win, but you have to you have to do this too. Two of Steph Curry's championship came because of Kevin Durant too. So right there, the debate kind of shifted to Kevin Durant's legacy and joining Steph Curry. I don't know if Kevin Durant's paying Gilbert under the table, whatever it is, but for this guy to say with a straight face. Wait, so hold on, so Kevin, I thought Kevin Durant got one. He got two? That he got two with him? I gotta look that up. I don't think Kevin Durant got two rings, two does he got two chips? I don't think he do with Golden State, does he? He just said no, I don't think so. I don't know, I'm gonna look that up. Well, Kevin Durant, he really didn't join Steph. Because Steph won two championships with KD. One of the most idiotic things I've ever heard. Look, it's just, it's plain and simple, written in stone. KD in 2016 lost to Steph in embarrassing fashion and joined him one of the weakest moves of all time. That's written in stone and it's not changing. And the most damning fact of all that blows that entire narrative up. Golden State, tears before Kevin Durant, were already NBA champions. And four years after him, were again champions. Look at Bird Celtics two years before him. They were a piss poor 32 win team. And four years after him, very similar at 33 wins. And look, if Durant post Golden State had multiple championships, a couple of MVPs, was on an absolute roll, I give it up to him. But since Golden State, it's been nothing but turmoil. The truly great players all timers, like a Curry, a Bird, Yes, they had talented rosters, but what they did with their teams, their organizations, is uplift them, and in most cases, rebuild them. Kevin Durant in his career hasn't built anything. Anything he's tried to build has a structural integrity of a two-day-old sandcastle. I don't know how you put KD in front of him at this present time. Be- because of the totality of it. Well, I, I think the thing is, what, what, what hurts your... I think I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I thought he only won one. Damn. So when did I remember? Damn. Okay. Well, whatever. Yeah. His argument is that KD was on a team that was up 3-1 and Curry came back. Curry has four titles and two of them are without him. And he out MVP'd him. So I'm just trying to figure the argument. Even if you say, well, he's a better player, what's your argument? He, he can do things that Curry can't? Mm-hmm. <laughs> everything except win titles without curry yeah but i mean i mean it... <laughs> look not the biggest fan of shannon sharp but right here this dude was spot on and he caught gilbert arenas red-handed his only response was but i mean i mean it... <laughs> this waffling had nowhere to go and look i don't blame him arguing katie's better than bird better than steph is a very hard and uphill battle and when arguing KD's favor, I mean, where can you really go? Gilbert said, quote, the totality of KD's career puts him ahead of Steph. I'm just sitting here thinking, what totality? Stats-wise, Curry at his peak, more impactful, better offensive player. MVPs, Curry has more, has the better MVP in terms of finals runs with and without Kevin Durant, has surpassed him. Championships has more, and the finals won numerous times without a super team. KD's two major accolades, that being his finals MEPs, are directly attached to Steph Curry's hip. The basketball players, because it seems like the criteria change if I like a player. Because if I like the player, rings don't matter. Mm -hmm. And if I don't, they matter. Mm -hmm. But that's how it is. We're going to always look at the negative on somebody's, like, you know, we're going to look on the negative if we don't like them, right? We can. So that right there is our last clip. And in kind of a full circle ironic moment, Gilbert now all of a sudden has respect for eras and thinks certain players get the negative slant with the media and fans. Why that's ironic is because Gilbert's opening argument of Kevin Durant being better than Bird was downplaying Larry's entire era. I think this video is important for a couple of reasons. Because any average Joe out there can get on a mic, hop on YouTube, and say, yeah, KD is better than Bird, more talented, played in a harder era. Anyone can say that. But defending that, making your case off facts, is a very hard thing to do. 
in this video. Hopefully, I did that for Larry Legend. So, as always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Alright, y'all. This wraps up this video. Appreciate all the love and support. We're going to keep this rolling. Um, I just found out some good news today for myself. Something in the good, good, good mood. Good mood, good mood. But yeah, happy Friday. Appreciate y'all. Hope everybody has a good weekend. We on to the next videos. And it's crazy also because it's just like... Like, I don't see. It's like... Uh, it's just Gilbert Arenas, man. Like, some of the stuff I'll be hearing him say. Not even just about, like, this video. But it's just... Some things to say, it's like, nah, bro. Like, come on, man. I don't know. But let me know what y'all think in the comments. Subscribe if you're new. Hit that like button. Turn on that bell. On to the next video. Love y'all so much. I'm out of here. Peace.